see their way out of the situation. I think that what, what you said at the end was was the was the key to it, right? Is sometimes you just gotta help yourself, man. I mean, if you can't get out of it, it almost sounds like you just don't blame it. Hmm. Well, I mean, this is the subject, y'all. Yeah. I didn't want to do the subject, to be honest with you. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am one of your hosts, Willie. And as always, I am joined by resident Big Brother. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, Willie? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? How's everyone? I'm here. I'm just here so I don't get fired. <laughs> J Dot DMV Zone, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm good. I appreciate you playing some Rhapsody to uh, to start things off. That mm-hmm. album that you just released is, like I said, I think the whole rap beef, all that Diddy stuff, is just a distraction. People stay woke. Rhapsody dropped the album. You need that. Yeah, yeah. You you keep pushing that, brother. Uh, I, I won't stop. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, Bo, talk about Joe. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, Will? I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Good, good. Yeah, uh, this is our last episode of May, and we have not talked about or touched on mental health awareness at all. So, like we always do, J Dot, how is your mental health? Um, it's going. <clears throat> you know, again, I guess I've talked to you guys before about being by- diagnosed as bipolar two and uh, having anxiety disorder. So I think this last week, that one of the blessings of like going and getting a diagnosis and like understanding what's going on with you is that when I see the things coming, like I can prepare for them and I can get in uh, a good place to weather the storm. So I, I feel a depressive episode, you know, coming on mm-hmm. and um, I'm just, you know, batting it down the hatches, making sure I'm, you know, I'm not in any dangerous situations or any dangerous state of minds or any forced isolation and stuff like that. But uh, that's the benefit of knowing what's going on with me. So uh, as much as I hate these depressive periods, it's a blessing to understand what they are and be able to prepare for them. How, how, since you in this, your latest relationship, I'm not going to say new latest relationship. <laughs> how, how has this new journey affected your mental health? Is, is if it has. Um, I mean, it's like, that's a hard conversation to have because, the person that you, you know, you develop in this, this relationship with doesn't want to hear it. Like just going from being able to kind of pick and choose when I wanted to socialize and interact with people to being in a situation where there's a person that's expecting to hear from you, that wants to hear from you, that is going to be, you know, a, a letdown to not hear from you. I, it, it is definitely an added uh, stress, stressor. I don't want to call it a stress, but it is a stressor, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, it's just another place that I have to find energy for. But, you know, if a person is worth it, you put that work in and you figure out how to make that happen. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's a, it's been a, a learning process, figuring out how to express to someone what I'm going through. And it has nothing to do with you. And there's, no, there's nothing you can do to make it better. You didn't trigger it. You can't fix it. You know, I'm letting you know what's going on um, so that you're aware. And, you know, so I can snitch on myself a little bit, but trying to explain to somebody that cares about you that, you know, that like, I'm about to go through something. There's nothing you can do about it. It's not your fault. Everything's okay. We're going to be fine. Yeah. That is uh, something hard to deal with because it's trying to get them to understand that there's nothing you can do about this. This is something that I'm going to have to go through and that I will go through. You're just going to have to yeah. kind of take back seat for right now until I get myself together. So it's tough and to expect someone to sometimes weather that storm with you because it's not always fun, but no, but I mean, relationships not always on a high. Preach. I ain't gonna say nothing else before I get in trouble. Talking to somebody else, but Joe, how you doing? No, but so (laughs) I was was gonna ask you, Jay. I mean, (laughs) hey, uh, so big brother, how's your uh, mental health, brother? Oh, by the grace of God going well you know for me it's just more of a making sure i'm prioritizing my mental health and remembering not to always 
accommodate everything or everyone, but making sure that I'm in line with myself, you know, making sure that my mental health is priority first and foremost. And always remember that if mine's isn't together, I can't do my job and help assist or encourage other people you know, fully 100%. So for me, it's always more of a giving myself a reminder, you know, of put your mental health first, you know, making sure that I make it a priority, making sure that I'm, I'm not making excuses of why I'm not putting me first. So for me, it's more, it's more of that and always making sure that I'm not always giving myself a reason why I can't prioritize myself. So it's like, hey, this is your feeling. You feel that way, acknowledge it, stand in it, you know, and walk through it. So for me, it's more of a, like I said, hey, get yourself to the front type thing. Yeah, I feel that. That's what I've been uh, going through for the last week and a half. I, um, I'm pretty close to almost deleting almost all my social social apps why i don't need it there's not there's nothing there for me everything out there is toxic right now and i'd rather deactivate those accounts and protect my peace yeah because a, a lot of stuff that i'm researching and looking into and reading i don't need social media for that Okay. So, so this week, week and a half, I've been in, I've been in tunnel vision. You know, I, I went through, I was telling, uh, some women last night that, you know, I, I went through a whole new transition. I'm going through a whole new transition right now. So, um, uh, a lot of my family members is on Facebook. So if I deactivate that, then I know, I know what that, I know what I'm doing. So only a few of them actually have my cell number. So outside of that, they can't they can't get in contact with me. Okay. So uh, that's where I'm at, though. You know, this it, it just a lot of the stuff that I've been seeing, like on social media, it's just like, dude, this it, it's a buzzkill. It's not it's not good for no one's mental health. No one, even the people who's trolling. It's just it's not. Uh, Joe, I, what, I can. What's up? Go ahead, brother. No, I was gonna say no. I can understand it because, like you know, you got to protect your peace at all costs, and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it is good to, you know, put it in reverse and either take a strong social media break, strong social break, or you know, if you some I do know some people who have deleted deleted all their socials to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, really, there's only like one social that I would keep, and that's probably TikTok. Outside of that, I don't really need the other ones. Personally. Okay. Joe, how's your mental health, brother? I'm good, Will. Hey, um, just working. You know what I mean? Just doing mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I completely agree with, you know, what you're saying with the social media stuff. I don't really, uh, I don't really get much on social media. I post a lot on eh, once in a while on, on Twitter or X or whatever, uh, here and there, some pictures whenever we're out, I don't know about, but you know, maybe kind of like a post and ghost type of deal. You know what I mean? Cause, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I swap my, my, uh, podcast to a different niche, right? Uh, because, uh, the society and culture and the people now these days and all the shit that, that's online. It's, uh, you know, it's like, I don't really have time for all that. You know what I mean? And it puts you in a bad mood, right? When you see just crazy stuff and, uh, you know, so I, I, I went to what I know the best, which is sports, right. And I'm having, and that's what I did is switch my podcast over to a sports podcast where, you know, it's the stuff that I know. And then, you know, it's stuff like that is not, you know, wild, man, you see all these videos and all this craziness on social media and you're like, man, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, it keeps your sanity. Right. And for me, I mean, I'm, I just go with it, man. I don't let any, anything affect me. I just, I just roll with it. Uh, if anything gets hard, I, I can only you know whatever I can control, then I move forward. And 
that's that's the way I look at it. I don't have a Facebook. All the people out there that, you know, family members and tough, you don't have my number, then call my mom, call my dad. You know what I mean? Um, and and that's what I do. You know what I mean? I have like the socials just for the podcasting thing. And, you know, I'm there once in a while. I don't post like I should. I don't put stuff up like I should or retweet stuff like I should. But I mean, the 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 list, you know, the least you are are you are on social media, the better your mental health is going to be. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, so, but yeah, this is end of the May and May is mental health awareness. So make sure that y'all are taking the time for self-care for your mental health. All right, big brother, you ready to get in on, get into this? Not really, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with everything that's going on and now that we are talking about how social media feels and make you feel, you know, when, when we, when I, when I brought this to everyone, I said, Hey, I know this is on and making the circulations about this video. And it was even after seeing it a couple of times, I was like, I just wish they would stop playing this video. So I thought to bring it to everyone and say, Hey, I'm sure we've all either seen or heard the video, you know, of abuse of, you know, with Diddy and his ex so not to say her name say her uh, name say her Ka name cassie but not to sen sensationalize it so i said hey why don't we discuss how as people as men how people can support and help people in a domestic violent situation you know what you know how can we help to support them? How can we, what can we do to help them see their way out of the situation? You know, because, you know, they, they, they don't leave for so many reasons, but gentlemen, let me ask you, do you really feel as though we can offer some support, help people see them way, their way out and help them see themselves in a different light outside of this relationship and understand it's not healthy for them. And let me just add that. How do you think that some people find themselves in this type of situation? Cause you know, some people just, it doesn't always start out that way. So let me just throw it on the table. Anybody who wants to go first, let me just throw it out on there. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go first. I think that what what you said at the end was was the was the key to it, right? Is sometimes you just gotta help yourself, man. I mean, if you can't get out of it, um, it's you the one that has to get out of the situation, right? You you can help you can help people out, right? But sometimes it takes you you to get out of it, right? And if you're still stuck in a situation like that, and everybody's trying to help you, it's your fault. You know what I mean, and it's just, that's just how it is. If you are in an abusive relationship, right? Because either what the dude has money or status or you know whatever it is, that's all. That all falls on you because you don't want to make a change, right? And you know, I'm I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there that you know somebody's going through an abusive relationship, and you have your sisters and your moms, your dad, your friends, and everybody telling you like, "Hey, man, you know you're in an abusive relationship. You need to leave that." And, uh, and you don't want to make a change, right? So I think a lot of it is on us, right? It's on us to take that step to, to move out, right? Unless you are stuck in a relationship where you're afraid that that person is going to harm you in a, in a way, right? And then you have to look at it and take it a step further. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I, I mean. If I was in something like that, I'll be like, and I'm, I'm still stuck with it and I'm still there. It would be me that I'm, I'm going to blame myself for it. It's like, I need to get out of here. I need to figure out a way to get out of here. And sometimes some people just don't have that will, right? So. It almost sounds like you're victim blaming. Hmm. Well, I mean, this that's, is it, that, that's, that, that's really how I know. I think I 
what you're trying to say, but the way that you're presenting it, it comes off as victim blaming. Well, people can take it as however they want to, but that's just the truth, right? If you don't want to leave the relationship. No. no. You know what I mean? No. What do you mean, no? No, that's not right. What, what do you mean it's not, right? not right? Because, so, so if you're stuck in a relationship. Because, because, because in certain situations that some people, if someone is in a domestic abuse relationship, right, their life is in danger, but they're so scared. They don't know that their life is in danger. They don't know how to get out of that situation, Joe. Right. So the fact that you're saying that it's their fault, you are victim blaming them. Well, I'm not saying they're, it's always their fault. I'm saying that's, that's, that's the second what you said. step. That's what I'm saying. That's what you said. The first one I'm saying is if you are in an abusive relationship, right, that it's not that you're not being harmed. You know, that's why I said the second one is if you're in where you're in danger, that's a whole different story. But if you're in a relationship, because abuse doesn't, it doesn't mean that they have to beat you up. It can be verbal abuse. It can be all kinds of different abuses, right? It doesn't have to be somebody that's like Puff Daddy beating you up, right? It's different. And some people have, you know, some people want to stay, want to stay because of there's something there, right? But you can say to yourself, it's like, I got to get out of here. You know, I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? And there's people helping you to try to get out of there. But sometimes that you have to get out of there. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't listen to somebody else. And then there are situations, like you said, where people are scared, where if they're going to go somewhere, they're going to leave. They're trying to leave. They're afraid that that abusive person is going to do something more than just verbal, like kill them or beat them up you know, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And what choice do you have there? And that's what I mean is you got, now you got to step it up to the next level. So what do you do there? Right. Call the cops. I mean, what do you do? If you don't have anywhere to go, anywhere to live, you know what I mean? That's the next level. But if you're not to that level and you're catching that stuff on time and sometimes people just don't want to get out of it, man. You know what I mean? It's just, some people just don't. I mean, I know people, men that were getting abused and they just don't want to go nowhere. You know, they have options to go, go somewhere else, but they're, they're just stuck. I mean, and and that's just, you know, you can talk to them until your face turns blue and they're like, no, I'm just going to stick. I'm going to stick here. I'm going to stay around. I mean, it's like, you know, you, sometimes you have the choice, you know, sometimes you have the choice to get out. You know, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to like victimize anybody, but you know, sometimes you, you have an option sometimes. And sometimes yeah, I, people choose not to. I think this is one of those situations where when you're speaking on something, you have to be careful how you articulate it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the way you could say it the first time, it came off as victim blaming. Compared to what you just said now, it's totally different than what you said at first. So we we have a big responsibility with this with this subject, y'all. I didn't want to do this subject, to be honest with you. Oh, I did because I knew how, how delicate this topic is. I, I think one of the most important things we can do, especially as men is, is some level of, uh, self policing. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily can help with the, uh, how do women get into these situations or even how do women get out of these situations that, you know, like we don't understand, we don't understand the, the mindset or maybe how they're thinking or what they're going through. So I think that's a difficult thing for us to put as men to participate in. But I think one thing we can definitely do is start not accepting this behavior from, from other men. Um, I know a lot of guys who tell you, I never touch my woman. I never touch a woman, a woman, a man who touches a woman is, is weak and all that kind of stuff. But they got a homeboy that they know, you know, treats his woman poorly. And sometimes by not saying anything, you you co-signing the behavior and you're making that person as the, the victim, the woman that's going through that, who can who sometimes sees it happen in front of you, you know, well, you know, it is no point in me reaching out for help because everybody thinks this is okay. And so I think I think one of the things, one of the easiest things we as men can do is self-police and you know. A person that acts that way shouldn't feel comfortable around you. You shouldn't have friends that can come talk to you about what they, you know, the abusive things that they've done. 
And we shouldn't turn a blind eye to these things and act like that's happening in their house. It doesn't affect me. Uh, you know, but you say birds of a feather, that kind of stuff. A lot of a lot of the, the damage that some of us are doing is by doing nothing, by saying that, you know, I just that's not my house, it's not my situation. I would never do that. But it's okay for me to associate with a person or, or passively condone their behavior because I don't say anything. Like we can we can stand out against it, you know, individually as men in our communities and our friend groups and make sure that those people, you know, aren't accepted and aren't, you know, I said that, that somebody that was going through that can would see there's a community of men who say, nah, this is not the way it's supposed to go. And I know maybe I would at least have their help if I stepped up. But I think, you know, we, we got to be more vocal about it and police ourselves. And, and I, that's one of the reasons that I thought we should discuss it, not to discuss so much of, you know, trying to jump on the, the um what happened in the video and try to, you know, sensationalize, you know, that, that story. But just like Jada said, which is we have to speak up. You see your friends or you know your friends do stuff like this and you never say anything or it happens in front of you. Of course, like like you just said, the woman is going to think, well, I can't turn to anyone from help. They see it happen. They know it happens and no one speaks up for me. And as far as, you know, where it's coming to, where it's like where we were saying, as I, the way I believe Joe was trying to put it was, you know, people are trying to help people and everything like that. And you get to, and you get, and you do get to a point where, you know, you're trying to pull the person up out of it. And it does as men, we have to speak up on it. And when you see something, say something where if you know someone who's about to enter into a relationship and you know, they, she has blind spots and you're like, yo, I don't know if you should be going there with this or you should be committed to him. Cause we, you know, even with the women in your family, you know, you can kind of see and or hear or you hear little stories about how the person she's dating or getting ready to marry has treated her or is treating her. Then you kind of got to kind of put that bug in her. And I'm like, you sure you want to enter into this? Like, because if it's like this now, imagine how it is going to be down the road and then help women see the blind spots of, you know, it's this little thing that you think is little, but something like this can escalate. And I think a lot of people don't realize that a lot of women or people stay in situations or stuck in situations because when they tear them down, they make them believe that they're all that they have. Or if it's a financial reason, sometimes it's financial because they make them and isolate them to depend on them. I mean, there are so many factors that go into this. That's why it's important for people like us to speak up on it. So to help people see themselves in any type of situation like this. Cause I think the way J dot put it was just perfect. Like, look, how come you're not saying anything or you got a homeboy that do it and you're not calling him out on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, should, you shouldn't be feel comfortable standing next to you. you know, exactly. You know what you stand for and what you don't stand for. And like I said, sometimes I'm not saying something. It's just like passively condoning it. You, you participate in it. You just, I don't want to say just as guilty as the person doing it, but you own some guilt if you're watching it happen. You know, what do they say? Uh, evil survives when good men do nothing. And I think this is one of those times that what we can do as men is is condemn the men who are, who are acting or behaving uh, poorly. Not yeah. try to figure out what she could have possibly done to get him that angry. None of that. Just these lines you don't cross. So. Yeah. And like you said, you, you make yourself complicit to it by being by being silent, because we're not we not, we don't have the perfect answer for this, but we just want to help people say, hey, you can help someone get out of this, even if you just speak some type of encouragement or call the things out. So that's the important part that we're trying to get here. We're not going to say everything right. We're not going to hit any you know, aha moment all the time. But the point being is that we want to make sure that we're speaking on things because we're always talking about safe spaces and masculinity and things like that. So we also got to be able to help one another see ourselves in every situation. Yeah. Was it on me? Yes, yeah, on you, Will.
Uh, what I did was I totally agree with what Jay said. He, I couldn't, I can't say it no better than that. But I also found a list of do's and don'ts for loved okay. ones who are in, you know, for trying to help someone that's in an abusive relationship. Uh, so the do's is listen to their concerns and provide emotional support. Let them know that the abuse is not their fault. Offer to help in any way you can, such as child care or transportation. Maintain contact with them. Provide a list of domestic violence resources. Offer to help them connect with resources and create a, safe, a safety plan. The don't is ignore the abuse, judge or blame the person, give them an ultimatum, Convince them to leave before seeking professional help or give, uh, the last one is, uh, don't give up on your loved one. I think that's the, that's the main big one where it's like so many people make it about themselves. Like don't give up on them. Yeah. Yeah. And can uh, I, can I, can I add to that where sometimes if a, if the person is made to depend on that person, sometimes why don't you be the person to hold the money for them to get ready to leave. Why don't you help them map out a route to get out of it? And whoever, once the person get out of the situation, don't feel pressure to tell the person where they're at. Right. Yeah. And Joe, like, you know, I wasn't trying to scold you or nothing. But the same stuff that you were saying was the same stuff I was reading in the comments underneath that video. And that shit pissed me the fuck off. I know what you were saying, but the way it was coming off, I got I just gotta make sure that we're not falling in that same that same lineup. You know what I mean? But I just wanna let you know that, sir. Sounds good. I'll tell you guys this. One of the proudest, and might pull me out of my depressive period. This is a proud moment for me. I've known that video has been circulating for about a week, and I had, it has not come across my timeline once. I feel like I have finally pruned the algorithm to the point where I understand that I don't want to see that. And uh, luckily for me, I have not seen that video, and I don't plan to. Yeah, yeah. you don't. You yeah. don't. All right. So that's uh, we got anything else before we move on? Nah. All right. Uh, so we're going to switch it up just a little bit. So I was, I was thinking, uh, someone who may be going to management or maybe someone who is just you no know, trying to find a new job. Maybe someone hasn't been out there in the, in the work world for a while, cause they've been stuck at a job for 10, 15 years and they want to go get a new job. Yeah. So I was thinking, what why don't we do like a little 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 skit of <laughs> what you shouldn't do, I say in an interview. <laughs> so of course, big brother is HR. Uh fun police. This, is, this would be fun. I've been uh I've been interviewing interns all week. And so I heard some doozies. So let's go. Okay. So <laughs> Uh, Big Brother, you want to kick it off on whoever you want to interview first, sir? Uh, let me kick it off with... Uh, let's roll, Joe. All right. <laughs> so we thank you for coming in today, and we've already reviewed your resume. So tell me one of the reasons that you're looking to leave your current position. Before we begin, what am I applying for? the next level up in your job. Okay. At a different company. At a different company. Okay. I'm looking for opportunity. Uh, looking for opportunity so I can, uh, opportunity and training so I can be able to to move up and to uh, have a better opportunity for myself. And what has you ready to, I see you've been with your company for a while, so what has you ready to move out of that company and go and start fresh with a new one. What, what was it about? 
what is it about your your current company that has you looking for outside opportunity and not upward mo mobility inside, you know, and in, in the current company that you have? Well, the, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of opportunity for advancement there. And I've been there for five years and I've tried to, you know, I've taken all the training that I could take uh, to better myself and to uh, be adequate for the position that I'm trying to apply for. Uh, but there is nothing available. And, uh, you know, so I'm looking for something a little, little different. Now, I'm happy where I'm at. And I'm just looking right now. And I'm trying to see if it, if this might be the perfect fit. And trying to see what you offer when regards to training and possibilities for advancement in the future. Perfect. And see, with the answer Joe just gave, he didn't blame the company. He showed, look, look, I prepared myself. I'm ready to move up. They just don't have it there within the company for me to move up. That's the reason that I'm looking outward, opposed to someone else who could have came in and just bad mouthed the company. So not to say that all companies are good. So the company could be, you know, not the best, but it doesn't. I think the way Joe framed his answer was, spot on because he just made it about they don't have it so i'm going to look outwardly so yeah so i definitely think joe's answer right. in an interview joe's interview answer is an a plus because okay. he big brother? because because the way he framed it all right well, no. big brother, i would like you to give me the same line of questioning so i can give you all a real world example of how absolutely not to answer this question <laughs> okay <laughs> But but see, that's the good way to do it because if you've been interviewing, all right, so let's just do it. All right. So thank you for coming in today, Mr. J Dot. And we we have thoroughly reviewed your resume. We are impressed. So what has you looking for opportunities outside of the, out of your current company? Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys uh taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, I was happy at my current job and then um you know, recently, you know, I had a bad day and uh, realized, you know, my manager just wasn't pulling his weight. And so, you know, had a bad day. I had to tell him about himself, you know, tell him exactly where they could put this job. And, you know, I I regret it. It's unfortunate, but, you know, it, it, it's what happened, you know, and sometimes you can push me too far and, you know, it could just happen that way. So, uh, you know, I'm looking to start over again, uh, get back on track and hopefully find some place without those uh, same type of source, same type of people. And you said your manager wasn't pulling his weight. In which ways wasn't he pulling his weight? Yeah, man, he was always talking to me about, you know, what I needed to do and, and what I needed to do better or faster. And he never did anything. And it's just, you know, he gave me a couple of instructions that day and I came in the break room and he was on his phone and, uh, you know, I just lost it. I had a bad day. You know, we all, we all are do a bad day from time to time. And yeah, so did you take this to the higher ups or the HR within the company, let them know that you weren't able to perform your position because your manager wasn't um, doing his position up to speed or was this, or did this all happen within what you describe as a bad day? And, you know, me, I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I like to attack things directly. So yeah, I, I understand that there was the option of possibly going to HR and having that conversation. But when I saw what I saw in the break room that day, I figured what better time than now to address this situation. Like I said, I had a bad day, so I probably could have handled it a little bit better. But, um, you know, some, you, you can't push people so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we do thank you for coming in and thank you for your direct, clear answers. Yeah. And we you got will be questions for me. Sound like you try to wrap this up, homie. Like I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. I had a bad day. What's going on? Oh no. Well, you know, each interview is allotted a certain amount of time. We do have other applicants coming in this afternoon, <laughs> so we will be reaching out to everyone that we are moving on to the second round. But we do thank you for coming in today. All right. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, judge you not. We validate. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, and see, but see, Jay, everyone's going to laugh at the way Jay Dot did it. But there are people who walk into interviews like this. Yeah, where they where they think happened. they they think if I keep it real, and I just go in all blazing. But see, what people don't understand is they did the company a favor. They said, you know what, we don't have to really look that hard to roll this person out. He, we can move the next applicant up because. 
of just his professionalism with that. I just had this happen to me this week. Somebody that told us the whole story about how they spazzed on everybody in the office and walked out. And it was all there. Like you said, Big Brother, it was all their fault. And the company, you know, bad. And they just, and they just had a bad day. But it was, you know, the perfect storm. And I think we, we were having fun with it after a while. And we just kept prompting for more information about this story, waiting for them to figure out, like, I probably shouldn't say, I probably shouldn't be telling somebody I want to work for. I did all of this. But they just kept going further and further. It was a, it was quite the interesting show. Yeah, they brought their feelings into into the interview. All right, so let's move on to our next applicant, um, Willie. Thank you for coming in today. Um, the team has reviewed has up, reviewed. Man? Oh, uh, the team has reviewed your your resume, so we wanted to bring you in, and yeah, so we're interested to find out. It seems as though you've been in your company for quite a while. So what has you looking for opportunities outside of your company after you've invested so much time at your current company? I'm looking for more money, G. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, uh, hey, brother, can you, can't you just go on this, go on this slap me? Can we just skip this? Go on to slap me on the end. Go on, go on, give me the top, the top dollar. And you know what I'm saying? Come on, brother. Look out for another brother. Come on. Yeah. So once again, thank you for that. Um, what has you, you... ignore me? You gonna ignore me? <laughs> oh no, I'm not. I'm not see, ignoring see, nah, you, but, you, but, see, but you're not. Nah, but you're you, you not want Uncle Tom dudes, You want them Uncle Tom dudes, ain't you? I knew as soon as I walked in here with a tight ass collar, with a with a low taper. Come oh, on, man. Come on. Well, Bust thank, the you ass. For, thank you. For Ask, ask, thank me you. ask me the question. Ask me the question. I think we can wrap this up. No, ask right me the question. <laughs> I've already asked you the question and gave you two opportunities to answer it, and you didn't answer it on either opportunity. Okay, give me, well, give me another. One. Give me another. One. My bad. My bad, G. My bad, OG. No. Go ahead. Now, cause, cause, cause you, cause you've been here for a while. I can tell you've been here for a while. You in the system. You, you used to work in the plantation. Go on. Give, give me another chance. My bad, master. Give me another. One. My bad. Give me another chance, master, please. All right, so you got, it. you got it, G. Go ahead. I've just alerted security that I actually need well, you to leave. Well, step outside. Step outside. Step so outside. We, did. Do, we, we do thank you for coming step in. Step outside. Did. Thank you. With your fake ass, coming. Stacey Adams. Oh, bust the ass. I don't even know what Stacey Adams are, but thank you. That's why you bust her. Because you Stacey Adams. Stacey Adams. I'm hurt now. I'm hurt, big brother. I'm hurt. <laughs> but. With that, even with that, what people don't realize is at the beginning where sometimes you, just because you and a person are the same ethnic group, don't come in too familiar mm -hmm. with bro and what's up, bro, and everything like that. Oh, I, can you look out for me? Just because you think you have that in common is not going to help you. So that's another big mistake people make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then if you if you, if you what's that? And, and then you walk in threatening the person. Yeah, security's coming. But you wasn't listening. No, the applicant wasn't listening. He didn't even answer the question. All you had to do is just a flick of your wrist, big brother. All you got to do is sign the paper, and this man is good. <laughs> you can't do all. You can't just quit flicking your wrist. On. You made this whole situation difficult. You didn't have to. But see, that's the that's the other point. The applicant is blaming you when they just didn't come through and just interview for the job. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure we've all we've all seen it. Whether it's someone in our family when they tell you what happened at the at the job interview, and you're like, you really said that. Mm -hmm. Our <laughs> the phone goes off in the middle of the uh, meeting. Oh yeah, that'll do it too. Jay, or, you want to? Jay, you want to interview on um, Big Brother since you've been doing interviews all week? My big, big Brother going to play it too straight. He's going to play it too straight. I'll just give you all a couple of things that you shouldn't do in interviews. Um, confidence is key. If I'm asking you a question about you and you sound unsure about the answer, like the one thing you should know everything about is you. And if I'm asking you about you and you hesitant about answering the question, like that just doesn't come off very well. I interviewed a bunch of uh, college students this week, 
for this internship. And I tell you, dudes, the ladies is killing you right now, just off confidence and presentation. Dudes were just scared, not didn't know what to say, and ladies were just, you know, answering questions like it was nothing. The other thing is don't put it on your resume if you can't speak on it. If it's on your resume, I didn't come up with this question on my own. I got it because you said you knew something about it. And then I ask you about it, and then you just add to that. And either say, I don't know, or or give me an answer. But, like, rambling, it's better to say, I don't know, than to just start rambling and, and freestyling on the top, off the top of your head. If, you, if you're dealing with any sort of professional situation where these people know their job, if they're asking you about something relevant to the job, and you think you can just start talking until something makes sense, right, you're just making yourself look horrible. I'd rather you just say, I don't know, but I can figure it out or I can know where to get the information from. But yeah, have some confidence in yourself and knowing how to answer questions about you and don't put it on your resume if you can't speak on it. And also let me add, let me add to that is answer the question. Don't divert from the question. Whatever the interview person is asking you, answer the question. Cause some people will veer off into like 20 other stories and you'll be sitting there like, what are you talking about? And then sometimes it's the interviewer's fault. Sometimes it's HR's fault because they don't know how to conduct an interview and they don't know what to ask. So just stay in the moment and try to follow along and just answer the exact question that they have asked you. Yeah. And don't veer off into a personal story. Yeah, these people interviewing you aren't stupid. So when, when you think you just... You deflect it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lead him off the trail with this answer. We are gonna go. I'm gonna start talking about my nephew and uh, his job and Popeyes, and somehow they are gonna forget their question. Like, no, we just what we Why heard Popeyes? was you have no idea what you're talking about, and you're afraid to say it. And I, I don't wanna. Uh, I can't hire that. It is some good ass chicken though. I don't. I mean, I mean, we we all seen they clone Tyrone, but. <laughs> Love oh. chicken for Popeyes. I mean, and you also. Review your resume before you walk in there so you can follow them point by point. Let me ask you a question. What if you don't have a resume? What if you're going for a job that you don't have no experience at? But in order for you to have a particular type of job, you have to have experience, but no job will hire you because you don't have the experience that you need. Let me sell it. I mean, they have templates. They have templates. Oh, to help no, oh no! Oh, sorry. Yeah, they have templates to help guide you into that, and you can also. Um, there are also community service that will help you in your community. As far as putting a resume together, you would just have to research where to go. But I always tell everyone, think about whatever you do, whatever your job is currently today. And write down everything you do in a day. So even if you got to write down every particular thing you've done Monday through Friday and start pulling out those small details and you'll find if you can align those small details as your duties and put them on your resume, you may find one or two things that can put you in that ballpark of a job that you have not stepped into that may possibly be able to get you into that interview. And what Jada said, if you can speak strongly and confidently and stand on those two things or a few things that can kind of put you in the atmosphere of that job and job duties, they may roll with you if you can sell it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people who have been in that job don't know how to do that job, but people who have been in the atmosphere of that job can run that job really good. So basically you said fake it till you make it. No, it's about it's it's about digging up the gems and your daily duties and your current job and finding what can kind of get you close to what the next job's duties are. Because a lot of people forget sometimes your management throws you extra things and that has given you experience and knowledge of certain things. That's why I always tell people don't discount everything you do every day in your job because if you line it up you'll be able to find a promotion or your next position and one of those extra little duties that you did. Okay. Kind of right, like yeah, and I, a person that, that, that does some hiring, like you can absolutely sell it. You know, um, there are times where I would prefer someone that doesn't have necessarily the experience. So I don't have to unteach you a whole bunch of stuff. 
but you've shown, you know, through your resume, like Big Brother said, describing other work that you've done, that you're capable of going into a situation. Like if you could show me on your resume that you're capable of going into a situation where you haven't had experience before and then thriving in that situation, then I feel confident that I could bring you in here, train you up on what I need you to know and get you to do the job. But you can absolutely sell me on that. You know, it's a lot of people coming in with all kinds of experience and then start fumbling when I ask them questions. If you're willing to say, I don't know, but I'll I'll learn or I'll figure it out or something like that, you can, you can, I say, take the chance, you know, go in there and tell them what it is, you know, and be honest about what you don't. And that, that is the most important thing to me, being honest about what you don't know, not trying to lie your way into a job. Don't lie and tell me you are something that I can tell that you're not. Like, stop underestimating the intelligence of the people that is interviewing you. I do this every day. I can hear from a couple of things that you said that you have no idea what it is that I do. So now I know when, instead of when you saying I don't know, I know that's the truth. If you start rambling, I know you're lying to me. And I'm more upset that you're lying to me that you, than you, the fact that you don't have the experience. But just be honest about what you know, who you are, what you're good at, and what you're not. And if I can use what you're good at, I will. Hey, Jay, I don't have any experience in IT, and I don't work well with others. Can you hook me up with a job? I cannot, sir. <laughs> I'm, I was being honest. I was I being honest here. And I'm, I'm giving you honesty right back. Is the it's the lack of people skills. I could have took the people skills with no IT experience, but the no people skills, I can't do. No, I can work well with people, just not be around people. Yeah, it's kind of a requirement of the job. I need you to be around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but wait, but, around I just want to say one more thing where kind of like, you know, people who work in like fast food industries and, you know, things like that, don't discount what what your next thing can be. Cause I always tell people, people in those industries have to count and balance their drawers. And that's one of the, of the things I don't think they really think about. That's actually something that you can put on your resume, you know, not just cash handling skills, you know, that I have to count and balance drawers. So that means you have, you know, something in the atmosphere that can kind of put you in a, bank teller type situation. So sometimes you got to, that's why I was saying, you got to really deconstruct everything you do in a day, in a week, so you can find your next position. Okay. Good shit, y'all. Good episode. Great topics. Great feedback. Anybody got anything they want to close out the um, show with? I think I think Joe got the job out of the three applicants <laughs> I, brought, I brought in today. One threatened me. Mexican? It's that damn, damn DEI, <laughs> no. that damn DEI bullshit. So, so one, now, one, you know one, what, big brother? Fuck you and your job, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So your, one threat me. One, 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 one wanted a hookup, and Joe was just so Joe. I'm going to just go ahead and email your offer letter. We are excited to offer you the Sweet. position, and we look forward to having you start at the company. Oh, I swear to God. That's where the guy, if he gets a visa next week, I'm going to be eating. I'm, I'm going to be in the parking lot waiting. Uh, I, the, the new thing on the show is you'll you'll hear which host will have to see me in HR. I think I think Willie is going to see me in HR after the show. So that's the host that will be joining me in HR after the show. For coaching counseling. <laughs> Hey, see, I All feel right. safe. I can do whatever I want because I know Willie gonna do something worse. I, I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, good shit, y'all. Well, oh, by the way, uh, happy Memorial Day, which is tomorrow. Well, this will come out Wednesday, but happy Memorial Day to everyone. Hope everyone has a safe holiday and get the fire to grill up. And well, Joe's case, propane tank. Uh, no, it's wood chips, electric. Yeah, wood chips, electric. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Correct them, Joe. Yeah, yeah. it's not propane. That's weird. A, a, a two hundred and forty <laughs> volt uh, plug in. Uh, <laughs> Joe, at, will? At, least get, at least you're getting the grill. We we on the tornado watch right now, so ain't nobody. Okay. Really, yeah, it, it's a tornado season for us. It's gonna be like this until probably about July. Y'all gotta move. Right. It's tornadoes everywhere. They just hit a tornado in Texas. I'm, I'm not here. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Tornadoes ain't everywhere. They're not here. <laughs> They're yeah. Not here. <laughs> yeah. Shit. It. It's. It, shit. All kind of weather. Shit happening. Shit. Don't matter where you move. 
Yeah, we still getting hail out here in the summer. Yeah. Oh, this is Texas. Texas. All right. Big Brother, let the people know where they can find you. I'm the resident Big Brother, host of Big Brother Advice Podcast, Motivation, Encouragement Community. New episodes Thursday, all major streaming platforms. Subscribe Joe. and listen. Joe, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You, you was done. You was done. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cut my interview up short. You was done. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Joe, the host of Bull Talk by Joe podcast. You can find me on all major platforms. Also, please follow us on the League of Kings podcast on YouTube. Uh, thank you and happy Memorial Day. Jay. Yeah, I'm Jay Dot Flan, host of the What Is TWS podcast. You can find it on all streaming platforms. And I have my new show, uh, One Man and One Woman, the podcast with Tara Michelle. Uh, dope conversations, very similar to this show, but you get the perspective of uh, a man and a woman. So uh, check it out if you get a chance. All streaming platforms. New episodes on Fridays. And I am really here for the Think About Us podcast that I co-host with my lovely wife, Fiona, where we talk about all things relationships. Uh, you can find us on all streaming platforms. Tune in, tap in, listen, follow, and all that other good stuff. Hey, Jay, you know it's a new Russ song out. Oh, you got a new song out? About to play it. Here it go. <laughs>